Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this quick series where we are programming some high-tech servos with the DPC-11 programming interface. Now, for many years, high-tech had the DPC-10 interface, and that was purely to program the HSB brushless servos. Now with the 11, it can program all of the three major families of programmable high-tech servos, and that includes the D series, the HSB brushless servos, and then the 5000 series and the 7000 series. We're all familiar with the 7954s and 7955s. So in this episode, we are going to show you everything about the D series, what menu that brings up, how it gets programmed, all the parameters, and we'll go from there. So without any further ado, let's head over to the bench and get to work. So let's start with connecting the DPC-11 to your machine. So first we have the 11 itself, we have a battery, and we have the servo that we're going to program. In this case, uh, it's an older HS series servo. So step one, we are going to connect the USB to our computer and we'll see a light come on. And on the title page of the application, we'll see a little green banner saying that it's connected. Next, we connect the servo to the servo port on the DPC-11. And because USB power is only five volts, we're gonna need at least six volts to program these servos. So I'm just gonna hook up a life battery, but you can also use a, a LiPo battery if you wanted to program with the full 8.4 volts. And now we see some communication occurring. So let's head over and look at the application. On the bench, we have a D-Series 645MW, a really very nice all around servo, and that's what we're gonna be programming today. So here we see down at the bottom, the DPC-11 is connected and we see we have a choice. We have to choose what kind of servo we're gonna program, the D-Series, the HSB Brushless, or the HS-5000 or 7000 series. So let's choose D-Series and see what menu pops up. All right, here we go. Now we're looking at that green box under connection. That means it's talking to the DPC just fine. And we hit the connect button to establish the connection with the servo itself. And now we see servo connection is complete and we see that it knows it's a D645, there's no ID set, and we have some buttons to load and save configuration files as well as refresh and do a complete program reset. Down below is this manual section. This kind of acts like a servo tester. These numbered buttons are in microseconds and we can simulate a microsecond value from a radio. 1500 is center, 900 is over on the left, 2100 is over on the right. You can also drag the, the little square uh, on that scale across manually as well. Down below is auto and we can do a sweep between the range of motion and you can adjust how fast or slow you want that sweep to happen. And it's the speed between the cycles, it's not how fast the cycle's happening. And with step is more of a smooth sweep through and you can again change the speed on how fast this goes through. Looks like there's just a, a low frequency oscillator in this program running through this. And in the manual section, you're seeing the relative microsecond value as it goes through the sweep. Funny thing is those microsecond buttons are active during the sweep. Uh, it doesn't do much, but they are active. It tries to go there, but the LFO takes over. Next below, we have the fail safe section where you can uh, program and test your fail safe section. You can program the overload protection. Smart Sense is a specific D series feature that allows it to maybe change some parameters on the fly, depending on what the condition is. Over on the right, we have all the programming stuff. So we can change the direction, fail safe, the speed, the EPA, the dead bandwidth, how sensitive the servo is. And below this, there's actually, you see those little pictures, you can choose, uh, there's some preset sensitivities. So if you're running a rudder servo for a boat, it might be different than a 3D plane or a car steering. And then finally your soft start, you can change if you want it really slow or no, no soft start whatsoever, which would be 100%. Let's start and program this servo. We'll make sure it's at the center. 
this is right out of the package. I didn't even put the 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 rubber grommets on or anything. This is right out of the package. And let's go ahead and to set the endpoints, we hit the setting button. It kind of goes into a mode here, and it's asking us to set where the center is. And so now that little slider is available, and so you can tap on the slider to move it, or you can hit the arrow for a little finer movement, and you can also drag the gray box uh, to move it manually. And the value you see in the red, 557 and whatnot, it says center is 2600, right is 5200. Those values, I don't know exactly what that means. I think it's just a value to help program. So we just hit center, and so I purposely set center over to the right a little bit, and now it's asking to program left. So we can drag, and you notice nothing moved. So we can kind of drag and say exactly where we want full left to be, and now it's asking to program either right or left. We just did left, so we'll do right. I made it 90 degrees to make it very, very egregious. We can tell this is a little bit different than it was right out of the box. So now going back to the manual section, as we do the same sweep through 900, 1500, and 2100, we can see the center left and right points that we just programmed. And if we go through the step, we can see that it's going through what we programmed. And if you're wondering why the left side is slower, it's because the LFO behind is, is sweeping through the microseconds at the same speed, and the arm just has a further distance to travel on the right-hand side, so it speeds up. So that kind of is a good demonstration on why you really want to set your endpoints, especially on your radio, because you might have a different speed in one direction if you set some wonky things up. So let's save this. And you can see here some examples of how I save my files, but I'm just going to name this demo. So now we've saved this configuration. It saves the endpoints and all the parameters. And now we'll hit Program Reset. And now it should be back to the way it was right out of the box. We'll hit 1500. And now it looks like it's back exactly the way it was before we programmed it. So now to show loading it. So let's hit the Open button. Load the file that we just saved. It takes a few seconds and says open completed and we see 1500 automatically goes back to where we set that center point and we go through the microsecond values again and we see it's back to where we um, set it. So let's play, let's go take it a step further. Let's change this to clockwise and now we can see how the manual is effectively, the servo is now going the opposite direction. It's now reversed. So we've changed that there. Because before when we saved it, we didn't change any parameters. And just for another parameter, let's change soft start to 80%. And so we'll save it and we'll overwrite that old file. Because I want to show that this save file also does not only endpoints, but the parameters as well. Okay, so we saved it. Just confirming this is our wonky programming. And now let's go to program reset. And we see there's counterclockwise and 80% down on the bottom. So now it's program reset. It's going back to factory defaults. You hit OK. So now we see the endpoints are back to normal. And it's back to clockwise. And soft starts back to 20%. So let's open demo HDP again takes a second to load and let's check. First thing we should watch is the program. So we saw clockwise change the counterclockwise and soft start change the 80%. And if we go through the endpoints, we can see it is back to our wonky programming. So just displaying that saving these configurations does both parameters and endpoints. So let's go ahead and reset this and put this in a model. So we're gonna put this in a flap, uh, a flat bay on a Lovachkin LA7 that I'm building right now, and we'll show you how you would program one of these servos while it's in the model. All right, so now we have our wing, and let's connect to the servo, and you can see that we're ultra close up of the flap and the servo in the background. We're connected, and this servo you're seeing is already programmed. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like right now. And I know the center is right there, and if it wasn't programmed, I wouldn't do this sweep, but I'm gonna do it slow because the surface is connected. 
but since it's already programmed, I know it's not going to go beyond the endpoint. It's not going to keep crushing the flap closed because it's programmed. Now you have to be careful when you're programming it and we'll show you how to do that. This is already saved, but just to show you, I'm going to pretend I'm saving this so we can come back to this after we play around because we're gonna reprogram it right here. You can see some of the sample names that I uh, save these configurations are. So now it's saved. I hit cancel because it's already saved, but now we're resetting the program and now we have to be really careful. I don't wanna hit 1800, I don't wanna hit 2100 because I don't want it to break through the wood. So I'm gonna manually move it just to kind of show you how uh, if I hit 900, it was going to crack through something. So if you want to be really careful, you would unhook uh, the control linkages here. But let's set center and show you how you can do this with the D-Series. We hit setting. Now it's asking you for the center. You decide where you want your center to be, depending on how exact you want to be with a flap servo. But just for uh, demonstrations, we'll set it right there. And now we can drag it over to the left as we see the flap close and we see how far we want it to move. So the flap is fully up, maybe come back a little bit, make sure we're not getting some uh, outrageous amp draw on the servo. And then we hit left, okay, that's the one side. And now we would get a protractor out, we slowly drag it over and say, for example, we want 50 degrees, we get a protractor and see where it hits 50 degrees and choose the right endpoint. And so now we have the endpoint set, and now we can confidently hit these buttons, the 900 and 2100, because we know it's not going to go beyond the endpoints that we just programmed. Boom. Boom. So let's reset this back to normal factory configuration and let's open up let's open up the file and there we go 900 1200 1500 and that's how you do it. So that's how you program a D-series servo. The key thing to remember is that after you hit center, the servo doesn't move and you can program it anywhere. You have to manually move it from the last point you programmed. Things are a little different with the brushless servos and we'll show that in the next episode. So everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy programming these servos. I'd like to thank all of my friends at High Tech RCD for sending me the DPC-11 to review and do a little instruction video on. Uh, I, had a, I was one of the first ones to ask for a DPC-10 years ago when the HSB series first came out and I'm glad to work through this and have fun programming servos. So everyone, thanks again. See you next time.